My name is Andrew Mann, um, and welcome to Small Talks. Um, I'm going to introduce yourself with a bit of a story from um, my partner. He uh, teases me uh, with this sort of story, this joke. Um, where does a dog without a tail go to get a new tail? A retailer. And where does a retailer go to get a new insight law to director? Well, Andrew Mann. A bit tough, but having spent the last two decades working in data-driven insight and loyalty roles in Tesco, Sainsbury's, Asda, Co-op, and latterly in Marks and Spencer's, um, he's sort of got a point. Anyway, so I'm now uh, using my experience and my network to help organizations like Oxfam and other organizations um, really work out how they solve problems. And so I'm gonna talk a bit about today, a bit about my problem solving playbook. So the first thing organizations who are successful need to do is think about the customer. Um, what are their customers' problems and how do they help them solve those problems? And those organizations that are successful are the ones that focus on delivering for their customer. Now, if you're gonna solve problems, you've gotta do two things. You've gotta work out what the problems are and then you've gotta think about how do you solve those problems? And actually, you know, the change conundrum exists because actually, you know, how do you make that change happen? Well, people say, yeah, we're up for change. But the reality is, one of the biggest problems is knowing what to change. Uh, and that's a problem that a lot of organizations have and they're not clear around how they drive, you know, what they're gonna change and how they're gonna solve the problems. So Steve Jobs was very clear on how you solve problems at Apple. First of all, you need to define the problem correctly. And as soon as you've done that, you almost have the solution. But how do you define a problem? Well, first of all, you need to ask lots of questions and you need to listen really carefully to what those questions are. You need to think about it, not just from the inside, but from the outside. So getting external help is really important or thinking about things differently is a really important way. And you need to spend some time on it. You know, you can't just come up with a problem. You'd be very lucky if you solve that problem straight away. And then you need to spend more time thinking about it, yeah? So actually, Einstein said if he had an hour to save the world, he'd spend 55 minutes solving, thinking about the problem, and then five minutes coming up with a solution. And that's exactly what, what a lot of organizations have got to do. Think about what the problem is, and then defining it. Now, the problem is that most retail is about all of our problems. And you've got to think about problems, be they tactical problems, or they more strategic problems. And so retail is about getting on and doing things and moving forward in lots of different areas. And you have to do that from a tactical perspective. Tim Mason at Tesco always he said, Andrew, it's all about ready, aim, fire. And actually getting really clear on, you know, when you ready, aim, fire, that's good. Sometimes you don't have enough time, so it's ready, fire. And sometimes it's, if everyone's running at you, it's fire, fire, fire. And so, you know, being able to operate at 30,000 feet for strategic questions and 2,000 feet for tactical problems is really important in a retailer's perspective. But actually, not aligning around the problem is really important. And a lot of boards actually find a way of not aligning around the problem. They find a way of strategic being strategically ambiguous. Um, strategic ambiguity is a great way of agreeing something, but actually not really agreeing it. So the, the, the finance director's interpretation is slightly different from the commercial trading director or the, um, the, the, the marketing director or even the retail director. We all have a slightly different view of what, you know, black is black in all those sort of areas. But it didn't mean that shade of black is what a lot of people say. So actually, what you need to do is find a way of bridging between your, your business and your customers with a clear vision, strategy and execution. And I found you need a bit of a process to work your way through this. And there's lots of different processes that exist, but actually getting a clear vision, being clear on your purpose, your objectives and your opportunity. So at, at, at uh, the co-op, we were clear on our purpose around championing a better way of doing business for you and your community. At Oxfam, it's about eradicating poverty now and forever. And then you can build a really clear set of objectives that are quantifiable and a very simple way of talking about it internally for your opportunity. Then 
you can think about your strategy. And that's a very simple, there's two elements to a strategy. What capabilities do you have to execute it? And where's the source of revenue that you're going for? So you can think about your source of revenue, which is maybe your, who, who are your customers, who are your competitors, who, you know, what market are you operating into? You're clear on those. And then the capability is what makes you uniquely different around what you're going to deliver against it. And then, and only then, should you start thinking about executing against the problem. You can build propositions very specifically to deliver against your cap capability and, and opportunities for revenue. And then you can build new capability if you need it moving forward. But um, importantly, you have a plan that is consistent, clear and unambiguous that everybody agrees on moving forward. So you've got a you've got a you've got a problem defined, but then how do you make it? How do you, how do you change in your retailer? And actually, getting the organisation aligned is the biggest problem. And those retailers that are successful are actually ones that can align the organisation around a plan, and have got a nimble culture that will allow them to adjust, adapt, and adjust moving forward. The change conundrum exists even more importantly. So people say they want change. But the reality is people don't want to change themselves and they don't want to lead the change. It's actually quite dangerous if you're a middle or junior manager to lead to, to change because your team could get smaller. Um, your job could disappear, your job could change. And actually leading that change is even more risky because if it doesn't go exactly to plan, then you've got to, it's better to keep your head down and you keep a job. So all of those changes are things that are important. So how do you drive change into an organization? Well, the first thing you've got to recognize is you need to be clear on where the vision is and you need to, you need to lay out that vision in a very clear, simple way and then align people around that true north in terms of where you need to get to it. So getting clarity on a vision, strategy and execution and aligning at the board level to begin with removing silos as you're going along and then recognizing that change is really hard for people and so you need to workshop through that cycle of change and keep at bringing people with you as you're going you can then develop really clear propositions build capability moving forward and then change the culture through a combination of really strong leadership and those leaders role modeling the behaviors that you want people to take in now crisis and uh, the co-op had a great crisis when they had a, a, a you know lost two billion pounds and had an economic meltdown. Um, Oxfam had a big crisis three years ago, and actually we're in the middle of a crisis at the moment with a global pandemic. But the Chinese word for crisis is a combination of two things: danger and opportunity. And I always think you can use a good crisis to actually create some opportunity. And we're in the middle of one at the moment with the global pandemic. And so you can see those retailers that are actually really thinking about it and making changes happen. The shops are shut, how do we become more digital? The shops are busy, how do we make our digital bit of a business faster or how do we make our shop more digital to make it easier for customers to shop? The board can really quickly align around uh, clarity of survival and, and gets rid of the silos because you have much shorter decision making. Clear prioritization and clear propositions are developed and people want change and leaders become leaders in a crisis. So to be summarizing it, get really clear on the what with a vision, strategy and execution, and then focus on the how you deliver it by being consistent, clear and unambiguous. So thanks very much for uh, listening to me. Now we're gonna move on to a conversation. Thank you, bye-bye.